Get a trap cut at the hands. Oh, There's a you. tap. Marvin Vittori's been waiting for it. I just trained so hard, and this is my reward. You know, that's all I want. That's my life. I was just so hyped up. This is what I have to do, man. Your winner, Marvin, the Italian Dream. Another hard day's work for Marab to Wallace Willie. Going the full 15 minutes and a big smile on his face there. Big respect for Sean O'Malley, but I won't fight next with him. So let's make this happen. I'm ready. Welcome to UFC Unfiltered. Please tell me that's on video. I've never been happier. I'm made for a fucking podcast. That's dangerous! Listen to me, we're at it! Welcome to UFC Unfiltered. Uh, Matt and I have uh, Marab Du... Uh, let me see if I can say his last name. Uh, Dualashvili. I think I got it right. It's a hard name to say. Doug Ellen, who created Entourage... Um, is, is going to be coming on. I'm not sure if he's a fight fan or not. I guess we'll find out. And middleweight Marvin Vittori, uh, who was really impressive against uh, Carl Roberson. Did you watch all the fights, Matt? Did, did I watch it, Jimmy? And first of all, Marab, you want me to help you with his last name? Jimmy? Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll do, I'll do it later. But the thing is this, he's goes, you know how <laughs> later? people, like, like, there's like, like, like you say, like Madonna, you say Prince. Yep. You say Marab. You understand? That's all you need is Marab. Because literally, I'm going out on a limb here. Yeah. There's probably only one. It's not like Matt or Bob or Jim. It, there's only probably one Marab in the whole there UFC. Is. And there's only one Marab that fights like that. I, I, where was I going with that? I, well, I can I tell you this? Here is the, the interesting part is Madonna and Prince. Oh, those are creative decisions. Yes. We just say Marab because we simply cannot pronounce uh, Duvalishvili. Yeah, but it's one of those names that you just need. Marab! Marab is good. It. Can I just tell you, I'm so happy for him, though. He's such, he's such a great guy. I can't wait to talk to him in a little bit. Yeah. He's just, like Longo did one of those parades again with everybody down at Lore and MMA. Yeah. And in, uh, in Garden City, he did like a like a parade of cars beeping for him the day of the of the fight, you know, just mm -hmm. showing their support because he really is the heart of the team. Everybody loves Marab. He's such a he's just the best type of guy. He's just such a good guy. I can't yeah. say it enough, Jimmy. Yeah, you know, Jim, like how I how I like go jump up and down and say how you're a decent guy. I say, I say that. That Marab's a great guy. Like they go Jim Norton. Like, oh, he's, he's okay, man. All right. Yeah, okay. that's fine. And that's actually better than most people would give me. I'll take it. I I'll take it. Jim Norton is fine. I don't need a big commitment to Jim Norton is great. I'll take Jim Norton. Yeah. Like that's good uh, enough. I love to tease you like a guy who did a podcast <laughs> for three years with you and 400 episodes. <laughs> I could can't tease believe it. You. That Isn't many. That crazy? I cannot believe it. Yeah. With me, Jimmy, let me tell you, you got the right about amount of me, Jimmy. You know? Two times a week for the last how many years? It's good. Yeah. You know? You know who gets too much of me besides, like, my wife is uh, is Longo. Longo, I, you know what I get with Longo? You know why? Because me and you are good friends, I feel. If I needed you, I can call you. Sure. But Longo is one of those friends where, like, I'll wake up, and I'm drinking my espresso, or I'm on my stoop, or I'm in my yard, or wherever. I, I call him up. You know, just call him for no reason at all. And uh, I just spoke to him the night before. So I'll call him up. Hey, what's up? Hey, what do you want? Hey, hey well, bullshit. And then at night, I'm going to call him again. Maybe I'll give him a call. I call him too much. Yeah. I'm that friend. I might be annoying to him. No, but it's not that it's annoying, but you're, you're, you're always, you guys are omnipresent with each other. You're always present. So I, I, get, I get that. <laughs> Listen, we have to. Sure. You got to do a movie minute. I don't, and... Sure. I got it. This is going to be a new one because this is like a, it's like, a, I'm going to call it, we'll do, we'll call it Matt's Movie Minute. And because we don't have the sound effect, you're going to have to do it old school where you do the da, 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 da. You know, you sing the little theme of it. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, I'm going to throw in Hidden Gems. All right. So okay. let's just see how, let's just see how this is going to work when we introduce the little bit of okay. what we're going to talk about. Here we go. So go ahead, Jimmy. 
match movie minute. Hidden gems. <laughs> now, why I say hidden gems is because this movie came out, I think, in 2002. And it's called Equilibrium. And it's with the great Christian Bale. Uh, you got Ned Stark in there, the guy who plays that. And he's a young, you know, he's younger, actually, he's 2002. I, you know who told me about this movie first, Jimmy? Oh. Is um, Joe Silver, the old UFC matchmaker. And he was so high on this movie, he said, mm -hmm. and back then, when in like 2006, whenever he told me this thing, he goes, ah, nobody knows about it. It, it wasn't really popular in the theaters. And I got to see what came out that year in 2002. Why it got, because sometimes movies get overshadowed or whatever it was with other big movies. But let me tell you something. I'm watching it. I started watching it. On, I found it on Amazon Prime. And it's, uh, Jimmy, let me tell you, it got me in right away. And uh, it's with Christian Bale. You know, the, the, I mean, in my opinion, and I, I'm not alone on this, Jimmy, the best Don't say Batman. It. The best, well, what, what are you going to say? Val Kilmer? Who Anybody but him. Adam West. Christian Bale? What about, what do you, you don't like what he's, you don't like when he has a criminal? He's like, where is she? Where? Right, wait. Do I like when he sounds like a 10-year-old doing an adult Batman voice? No, I don't, Matt. However, I love Christian no, Bale. He's no, amazing. No, he's great. He doesn't use technology like where it, like I think uh, ben, ben Affleck did it. See, I like, he, I like the Zack Snyder action with Ben Affleck. I'm going to get you. Hold on a second. Wait, who doesn't well, say that? <laughs> I'm coughing. By the way, can we talk about one thing? Uh, you know, I'm, and can we... Uh, I, I, a long time ago, said the fight was going to be Masvidal McGregor, and apparently I was wrong. But I'm not as stupid as everybody thought I would because uh, Usman is fighting Gilbert Burns. Look, I don't, Masvidal, I guess they could not come to a number that he was happy with, and maybe he sees a McGregor fight as a much bigger fight. I don't, I don't know. I'm, not, I'm throwing McGregor's name out. This is, no one has told me this. Uh, but I guess they could not come to, a financial figure, but Jorge, how old is Masvidal? He's got to be in his, I'm going to say. Is he 38? Let me see. He's no. 35. Oh, he's younger than I thought. He's 35. Okay. okay. 35. And, and I know you can't just take whatever fight they give you. Like, you have to be comfortable with it. And you have to want it. Yeah. Um, when I was 35, you know what fight I took? Which one? Freight train, Jimmy. I, I was 35 years old, right? And I got, a, and I was taking my kid for a walk. And they, uh, no, it's like, it sounds like a dog. Take my kid for a walk. I, you, know, you know, you you put them in the stroller. It was, you know, it was a long time ago. I had little kids. Got a call from Joe Silva. Want to fight this guy, Frank Trigg? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah, Jimmy. Uh, you fuck yeah. Happy. You want me to fight that? All right, listen, let's get back to business. Come on. Why is um, Masvidal lashing out at other commentators like the other other fight like is he live at cormier in dc talk to me i don't know um you know look i obviously would never think that i could tell masvidal what he should do i don't know the man um by his choice i'm sure i would love to hang out with him but uh i, I guess he is just waiting for the the money to be right or whatever but he he well, seemed like he you, was what do you mean next, out though, they said he called it he was pissed off at like uh dc a couple of commentators um, they're assuming it's DC and Felder. They say he said, uh, and for the white knights that have been commentating jobs, that have commentating jobs at the UFC, that say just fight. You guys should be embarrassed to call yourselves current former fighters. None of you been doing it as long as me and like me. There's a reason you're commentating. He said, I already explained why I signed a new deal. It's either take it or leave it and not get paid. I would have signed another deal if I was if it was done in good faith. Uh, he wanted, he called me night before he wants to announce and tells me to take it or leave it. That's not negotiating that strong arm. Okay. So he had a reason that he didn't want to take it. He probably felt there wasn't enough time to negotiate. Uh, again, I'm sure he has his reasons, yeah, dude, but whatever how, it is, businesses, businesses uh -oh. like that. Yeah. But, um, but when I think about the fight with Gilbert Burns, I mean, Kamar Usman, what's interesting about that is. I, I want to say Gilbert Burns is dangerous off his back. Yeah. So I could, I could see him going for some, I could see some nice jujitsu in this fight. And he's so well-rounded, but I, I believe a lot's going to determine how he is off his back. Cause I believe he will be taken down 
you know? Yeah. But I mean, I know Tyron Woodley's also got a great wrestling background, but he's always used it to stay up. He was, he, I mean, there's times he went for takedowns in his, in his, in his fights, but he's not known as that guy just to keep taking guys down and right. he's usually knocking guys out with his right hand, yeah. you know? And uh, Kamaro, he always utilizes his wrestling and his wrestling is so, so top notch that if he's able to put Woodley on his dash, you've got to believe he's going to be able to put uh, Gilbert Burns. Anybody he wants and Masvidal yeah. if he fought him, yeah. But Gilbert Burns, unlike a lot of guys, he's going to be very dangerous off his back, you know? Oh. You know, you could you know, could be very you, th- you could have a you can get taken down, but if you're very threatening off your back, guys try I guy can't settle in, can't 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 calm down, right? Can't, can't like um be calm down there and, and get a little rest. You scramble back to your feet a few times. It's a very interesting fight, man. It's hard to count count Gilbert um, out after what he just did with Damian Maya. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's Probably, very I mean, different. Woodley also, obviously. But would, uh, uh, when I'm thinking about the Damian Maya fight, when Damian Maya is really, when he's on you, he's hard to escape from. He's very hard to escape from. And Gilbert Burns has looked incredible. Um, and again, against uh, Woodley, just so fucking dominant. And he proved he can go for as long as he has to. Uh, hey, props to... Uh, what do they Charles, do? Charles LaRosa. <laughs> you know, he came back after getting dominated by yeah. Bryce Mitchell. But very the well. best way to get over an ass beating is to beat someone's ass. He was in a dog fight. You know what I mean? <clears throat> yeah. Um, uh, I'm, I'm trying to see. Which, was he on the, he was, no, he was on the main card. Yeah. But uh, Kevin um, Aguilar, uh, you know, that was a, that was a good, that was a good fight. It was a good fight. They were scrapping. Yeah. I mean, you got to give him the decision. Ball. Yeah. Yeah. Charles Rosa for just, uh, you know, it's hard to, you know, you get a, you get a beat like that. You can question yourself, you know? Did you see his face when they, when they said, uh, I guess 29, 28 Aguilar, he was like, what? Like, like he couldn't believe it was even a split decision. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the way you want to be. You yeah. Know, it's better than being like, Oh, Oh, goody. That. <laughs> oh, good. That's great news. I lost one. <laughs> Jimmy, you're so funny. And there's a little back and forth with uh, Jessica. I, um, missing weight. Now, she said it was a quarter pound, but it looks like Calvillo is saying she thinks it was as much as three or three and a half pounds. They had gotten a call from her coach. Yeah, that's, you know what? That's a, I don't know how that works with the old towel, towel trick. They grab the towel and release pressure. Or, I don't know what it, I don't know. They, they, there was, uh, they, they, they say that's like an old weight cutting trick. You know what I mean? Like, so it was really more weight than it was. And I didn't see the video of her weighing in, so I don't know. Let me ask you. I'll tell you, she did look big. I'm not saying she, I mean, I, I can't, I don't know the facts of that, but I will tell you that, holy cow, she did look big. And like Cynthia Calvillo, uh, that was, she, 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 she really, was very good. Yeah. Man, I like the way she puts it together. Like she's not desperate for the takedown. She strikes when she has to strike and she strikes well. And, but she's not trying to just take her out of there because she knows that Jessica is durable. So she's getting off on yeah. her. She's getting out. She's shooting in a perfect takedown. Nice ground and pound. Man, I could, could, very good control. Yeah. Very good control. I loved her control on the floor. Um, you know, people could jump for submissions all day long. You didn't lose a position in a grappling match. It's no big deal. You right. lose in a fight, you know, the guy's up there standing up there on top, they're elbowing you in the face. You want that control. So that really, really made a difference. Agree. I, I was really impressed, man. Yeah, she was. Re- and it's funny, Jessica's corner kept telling her, get going, get going, get going. Uh, you got to turn it up. You got to turn it. And she just seemed well, like she couldn't. This is what I'll tell you, Jimmy. Couldn't get it going. This is what I'll tell you. I, I, I heard good instruction. There might, be, there might have been good instruction from uh, Jessica Eyes corner. But this is what I look at between the fourth and fifth round, okay? You, I hear, I try to listen to the quarter then because obviously I'm going to say she lost every round. I don't know where somebody gave a 49, 48. Maybe you can give it a, a I don't know. I have to see the first round again, but it, it, she didn't win more than one round. She was behind. Going into the fifth round, did you feel she was behind? Did oh, you? Yeah, absolutely. 100%. Obviously. So yeah, it's of like if we're, everybody, you got to see that. So the biggest thing, you want to give instruction, that's great. He was talking to her like it was the second or third round or – She's still in the fight where she had time. She had no time. Time was up. She's either finishing her or got a 10 and 8 round where they're saying she's lucky she's getting out with a life. 
That's what you say to her. Yeah. Otherwise, you're doing her a disjustice. She will not, the fighter, it's not up to the fighter to know that she has to get it done. She's living in the moment in there. You know what I mean? So she's yes. going through her head. She might be thinking she's better, doing better than she's not doing or worse. So it's up for you to say, listen, you could say, look, you're up. To, you, if she was up in the fight, listen, you're up in the fight. This person, they're, they're desperate now. They're desperate. You got to keep your, uh, be alert from the second you go, you're alert. All right. You know what I mean? You got to, you got to let them know where, where they're at in the fight. Cause a lot yeah. of people don't know in their head. It's not up to them. It's up to you. There was no sense of urgency in the corner. Of just he had to know she was losing. There was though, no right? sense of urgency in the fourth, the fifth round. I gotta listen yeah. to it again. Yeah. But from what I heard, it was some boxing instructions with the, you know, with the uppercut. You do this or that's and that. It's good. But you gotta you gotta put a stamp on that fucking fight. You're yeah. behind every round. You're behind every fucking round. Jim. Matt, as a guy who coaches, I you definitely know better than me. And I, I noticed that too. I sometimes I because again, I don't know how you're supposed to talk to a fighter in that moment. That's but there are times where you're like, look, if you're down three to one, clearly down, or even, I don't know how they're not being more urgent because that was, she was absolutely going down. If I felt like she was down going to the fifth. Congratulations on your fight, Marab. Yeah. When you got, to, like, I don't know if Jimmy knows, you got to Vegas uh, two, at least two or three weeks ago to help out um, Aljo to keep Aljo ready for his fight. Right. Yeah, yeah. I came here for support Aljo, and like, and I was Aljo's fifth sparring and training partner. He, he has, um, uh, like, he has Dennis Bezukia, he has Steve, he has Alaya Quinta, yeah. and uh, I came here for support, and like everything happened great, like amazing how it happened, like. Works out good, and I'm so happy. It's it's a great but, couple of weeks. Great couple of weeks for the team too. Yeah. Amazing. It's, it's best, yeah. Hey, Marab, did you get to go out and enjoy Vegas at all? Like, uh, it's not the way it normally is, which might be good for if it's your first time because there's not that many distractions. But did you get to go out and do anything? Yeah, actually, we've been going out. Uh, 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 we we have a dinner together, and then like. It starts to open up, and uh, that's awesome. So, listen, really quick, Marab. Yes. Uh, the fight with Rabel, you out. You're always in shape. You're always training, but there's, you know, there's a difference when you have a camp to train for. How did you get the Ray Borg fight initially? With your opponent was Ray Borg before he had a family emergency. Yeah. Uh, how did you get that fight offered to you? Yeah, like I said, I came here for Aljo's support, and we uh, like uh, Aljo was training hard, and we everybody support him, like uh, like share some rounds with him, like some sometimes I used to be jump and grab playing with him some rounds, and uh, I was eating ice cream with the boys, and uh, yeah, we met uh, me and Aljo. We have the same same management, Balenji Group, and we, we met uh, one of those. Uh, manager Lloyd and then we we, we spoke and I, I said like I'm, I'm ready I want to fight like hopefully they give me something soon even any short nose fight and he said maybe he can give me any some fight and now uh, I said yeah of course I'm ready for jump in even this week because that was uh, 535 uh, no sorry maybe six uh, three 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 bantamweight match you know I said if yeah. Somebody, somebody needs me. I will jump in. So, and but he said next week we have a, we have a match for you, Ray Borg. Oh, I said great. And I, I have a big respect for Ray Borg. He, of course, his big name, good, good fighter, and that was exciting fight for me. And I said yes, of course. And I, and um, and I, I watch Charles just fight Saturday. We celebrate. He make us happy. All Sarah Longo team and. Oh, yeah, uh, he, yeah, yeah. he did. He deserves a lot, lot more, and he should be champion already because uh, he has. But what a performance, uh, though! But when he took out, I mean, Corey Sanhagen is a very good fighter. Yeah, but everybody was expecting. They said that fight was a guinea fight. A lot of people were saying, "Man, that can go either way." So for Aljo, and in a night where there was two really good knockouts with, yeah. with uh, Sean O'Malley. The one that I think you want to share a cage with. We'll talk about that in a second. Sean O'Malley, Sugar Sean, and um, and Cody Garbrandt. So 
three guys fought in bantamweight, and the guy really the most talked about the performance was Aljo, and it wasn't a KO, it was a submission. But I really think that was due to his opponent being such a high caliber. What do you think? Hundred percent. I mean, yeah, Corey. I mean, that was like, yeah, he was not. I mean, he was number four guy, but he was. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, he was number four guy, of course, like, he was, uh, like, I mean, he's the guy, he was the, I, I think that, that that fight should be the title, title fight. Yeah, it could have been. Yeah, yeah it could have <laughs> been. So, because, like, because Cody Gabrand is good, but he has three losses before, man. So, and, um, it's true. Yeah, so, and then. Yeah, Aljo made us happy, proud, and I mean, his big statement. And now I'm so happy for him. He has a title fight next one, and and he's gonna be champion long time, long time, I believe. I love that he always shouts yeah. out Marab about being like his secret weapon to train for training. Yeah, because Marab has such a pace; it's a very hard pace to keep up, even just grappling. Jimmy, I'm a lot bigger than Marab. I try yeah. to hold down Marab. It's a it's a nightmare. Yeah. He doesn't stop. He doesn't stop moving ever. So it's hard to get to get a break. So it's so good for. That's why Aljo. He keeps Aljo so alert. You know. So it's it's you guys really you really do push each other to the next level. I really love right. the way you guys work. You know what right. I think, Marab? I think that all of the world should look at the Sarah Longo team for race relations. Look at how everybody loves each other. It don't matter what yeah. color. It doesn't matter that what, what, what part of the planet you're from. Every Jimmy, what we don't see anything. It's all it's a about melting color. pot. Exactly, Matt. Absolutely right. And uh, no drama. We don't have any drama. <laughs> we, we just love. We just love each other. We support each other. We we go to 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 each other's fight and we celebrate and like. Uh, uh, I, I don't know. We have a best team. Man. Hey, how did how did you feel when you saw Ray Longo and at the Lore MMA with everybody with the parade? Oh, for you? Of course. Doesn't that feel good? Course. Everybody loves you so much, Marab. Everybody says Marab's the heart of the team, Jimmy. You know that. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Thank you so much. He must much. be doing something right. You know, his parents. Your parents should be very no, proud. I, no, I'm doing same thing. What you guys show me? You guys show me to like. A, we we have to be we have to be right right persons and we gotta do right things and that's what I'm doing because because um, that, you know <laughs> you mentioned a lot Sean O'Malley and I like Sean mm, O'Malley I do too I yeah do. I like his style and he's a nice kid I like him plays video games and stuff but you know Marab is my brother though I'm with yeah hey, listen sure. Jimmy I back my guy I'm what is it about to. Sugar Sean O'Malley that you want? That you want to? Why do you want to share the cage with him so much? Popularity, his fighting style. What is it? Because he's his style now. He's um, um, he's he's the guy. He, popular. Um, yeah, yeah. He's popular. He's strong. He's undefeated. Uh, like, of course, he's um, he's 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 good fighter. And but I believe in myself. You know, and we work hard in Sarah Longo team. You know, we work hard and we are ready. I'm, I'm ready. I'm just gonna just just shoot and shoot and try take him down, make him tired. <laughs> you know, yeah, and, you can uh, tell him the game plan. That's fine. Yeah, that's what you yeah. said. Just <laughs> yeah. right. You don't want to box yeah, with him too much. I, right. I don't want to box. Uh, maybe that round. That round I can box. get him tired a little bit. Yeah. Exactly. Make him. Yeah. <laughs> try make to fight him get off. Yeah. Yeah. Like the first sound, I'm just gonna like, keep a distance, shoot uh, wrestling, try wrestling, make him tired, and at that round, I I, I will show my bucks. <laughs> Marab, can I? I I would first of all, Jimmy, yeah. uh, even as a fan, first of all, Marab could be he could be un, literally could be undefeated in the UFC. Yeah. You can't look at his record and, and 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 say that. I mean, the Frankies, I never count my chickens before they hatch. I never say you won that fight ever. And I don't like to bring up old shit. Frankie size fight, he won that fucking fight, in my opinion. I couldn't yeah. believe it. How many? But anyway, that guy's a nice guy. I don't want to. And the other fight with Ricky Simone, controversial ending. Jimmy, there yeah. can be two undefeated fighters right now in there. You understand? Yeah. But I am, I am so psyched for that. I think that would be a fucking amazing fight, Marab. 
I would I would enjoy that fight. And the more rounds, the better. Would you you would like that in a three or a five round? I, I love five rounds. I love five rounds. You know, Matt, you know my cardio. I, I have a good cardio. I cardio know, was legendary. No yeah. yeah. So have you gone five rounds yet, Marab, or no? Uh, never, never. But um, uh, go three rounds with Aljo means five rounds. Five rounds with anybody else. Yeah, so you, you would have a big yeah. advantage over anybody in a five-round fight uh, with, with the cardio, especially as the fight goes longer. Yes, thank you. And I'll tell you, it was hard to train in quarantine we really got to give props to uh, Raging Al Iaquinta for step. First of all, for opening up his home, having them guys over, and having them train at his house in his little makeshift uh, gym garage, which is like a little tiny, little not a huge place, but it's it's good enough. For, I mean, they got solid rounds in at Al's house, and then Al plays jumps out in the head ro- head coach role, and he cornered both those guys back to back. Raging Al is a great guy. Yeah. He's a great man, and that's so nice. I, I just love the unity and the camaraderie, Jimmy, of yeah. our team. A lot of you know, a lot of other teams say it too, but I just I love it, man. I really do. Really, you know? yes. Yeah, I'm I'm blessed. I'm blessed, and I I'm part of the team, and I I don't know like I'm, yeah, I'm so thankful. Well, Marab, listen. Oh, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say one thing, and you you can guess what it is. Because you're not going to do it. I know you're not going to do it again. What's one thing I didn't like in the fight? You tell me. If I had to correct anything. And I don't like it. In my fight? In my last fight? Yeah, listen to me, Rob. I told you 10,000 things that I liked. I loved it. I liked the way you I like your timing on your takedowns. Your ground and pound. I like your fighting the legs. A little butterfly guard. What's one thing I didn't like? I'm gonna, I'll tell you right now if you want. Yes, tell me. It's a good picture, but what didn't I like? I don't like that fucking neck crank. I don't like that shit. <laughs> I don't like it because yeah. you know why? Because they could take your fucking back. I, if this was Tuesday night class, I'd yell at you. Because I, but I love it. <laughs> but Marab, you know what I'm talking about. And listen, yeah, a lot of guys, you tap with this, but in a fight, you almost had his arm too. Remember? Yeah. And you had yes. the head. And yes. listen, Jimmy. It's not, it's not, it's not fun. Trust me, it's not fun. It's not fun to be on that because Marab is strong too, so he can maybe pull someone's head off. It feels. Yeah. But if you're fighting a good jujitsu man, they're gonna be on your fucking back. I'm, right. listen, I'm sorry. I don't want to forget it. But yeah, yeah. I don't. It, but hey, listen, it is an awesome picture. He has a picture of him ah, like fucking. <laughs> it's great, but it's <laughs> dangerous. I, when Thank we fight you. Ray Borg, we're not doing that shit. But Marab, right. man. We're gonna, we know you got to get to the plane. Congratulations. We it was, love it was you, great, man. man. Great fucking Thank fight. Thank you so much. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Jim. I appreciate uh, Like, And I'm going to keep... I'm, I'm coming. I'm keep continue, keep growing, uh, keep getting better. And I'm, I'm just... I'm just... I don't know. I'm just going, coming. And I'm just continue, like... How what I'm doing? I love fighting, and I'm so happy. Everything about. I'm happy for you. We're happy for you. Yes, sir. And you really are the one of the most entertaining fighters out there, Marab. Even if I didn't know you, I'm like, and I I love it, and I love how everybody had the headdress on. I was jealous of that. I'm like, I want to be there with that on. Uh, listen, I'll see you when you're back, buddy. All right, man. Thank you so you're much. All right, Marab. take care, Marab. Right. Take care, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. All right, be good. Thank you. Hey, Doug, how are you? Good, how you doing? How good, are good. you, Doug? Nice to meet you. You too. What's going on, guys? Yeah, I don't think you and I... I've heard your name so many times over the years. Um, I'm, I'm good friends with Dice, and, and I, he really loves you. Like, he, he yeah. credited you so much with this great resurgence he's had in, in the last few years. Yeah, he, he always does, which is great of him. And I, I've been obviously a fan of his since I was a kid. So I, I always told him, cause he says, thank you. I said, I didn't do you a favor. I did myself a favor cause I knew how good he is. And you know, it's uh, Hollywood's a strange place as you see what's going on right now, the way people get rewritten and this and that. And you know, in 19, whatever it was, when I was in high school, Dice was the biggest thing in the world. Yeah. And he's he's still just as good, you know. So it was great to have him on. 
Now you're saying rewritten. Do you mean um, going back and, and people being critiqued for roles? I'm, I'm not sure what you mean. It, it does seem like a very strange time. Well, I mean, that obviously is one. And then, I mean, I'm, I'm just reading right now about, you know, obviously Gone with the Wind, they're pulling off the of HBO Max. And I just read some stuff about Quentin Tarantino. Right. Um, and the question is, is, you know, where does the line draw between, you know, art, what people write, and, you know, what people actually say and think as their own personal thing. So it's, it's a tough time. Because even Dice, as you know, Dice was an act. I mean... He put on a show and he's really like, you know, a really good guy and a father. And he's been pretty much in monogamous relationships his whole life. But what he talked about on stage was different than, you know, what he actually is. So I, I spent three years on the road with Dice. And a, a perfect example is this the difference. All he would talk about is, I fucked that. So I'm like, this is going to be great. We're going to be getting laid on the road. Right, yeah. And it's literally, you go back to the hotel room. He peels the plastic off the fruit. It's dainty. <laughs> it's the worst. He's just, he yeah. just wants to hang out with his buddies right. like, and play, uh, play pranks. Like, it was none of that shit. So right. yeah, there was a tremendous difference between this animal on stage. And I used right. to tease him and tell him what a mama's boy he was. He liked honey, like big comforting sweatshirts. Yeah, and he's a really Total good opposite. dad, you know, and, and that's that's why I mean, you know, obviously whenever there's a, a situation like that's happening right now, which needs to happen, changes need to happen and things need to happen, but there's always an overcorrection and I think people are going after anybody they can right now and it's, you know, it's a, it's a little scary, so. And what is that? Is that to make themselves feel better or it just really feels like, it's like, come on, like things taken out of context or just not mean spirited or whatever it could be. It's like, yeah, listen, you know, this guy's not trying to do this to hurt somebody, you know, yeah. this, you know what I mean? So I, it, I it mean, really bothers me. You know, I, I think, it, you know, it's a tough time when people get emotional and they, they take things personally. My feeling is, and listen, there's art movies that have offended the shit out of me, but I think what makes great art is when people push boundaries and sometimes they go too far and sometimes they don't. And also sometimes some things last. I mean, Gone with the Wind, which, listen, I haven't seen the movie in, in 25 years, so I can't even really speak about it specifically, but it's always listed as one of the best movies ever made. Yeah. And there are things in it that are offensive to people, just as me as a, a Jewish person, I see movies all the time. There are things in it that offend me, but I don't think, I don't think you can go back and, and, and critique art. You can look at people and what their actions in their real lives were and whether we should be celebrating them, which I think is a different story, like the Confederate flag and like some of these generals that they're going to take down. But I don't think you go and, and look at art and say, put it away. You can talk about the context, and, uh, you know, which I think is an interesting conversation. And, uh, you know, Quentin, Quentin, who I think is one of the great filmmakers of our lifetimes, um, you know, he used the N-word a lot, and he's taken criticism about it before. Um, and I see today in the news, there's people coming at him again. So we'll see where it, where it falls, you know? Isn't it interesting, too? It, it, it's, it's so selective what upsets people. Like, when, it, when they want to go back and get mad at you for work you've done, nobody gets mad at people. And, and it's the oldest argument in the book, but nobody gets mad at people who have committed murders and rapes as in roles. Nobody gets angry. At, at that, nobody gets mad at it, which is about a clown who murders children. Like everybody's like, that's great, it's entertaining. Right. But if you said something that is deemed socially offensive, in this context, you're a bad person. But it's like, well, yeah. what, killing children is never allowed. Like right. that's never a thing that we're, we're never gonna smile on that. There's never gonna be a time where, like, well, killing children used to be okay. So right. it's just funny what people go after. And I, and I think that's how it should be looked at. A character in a movie is a character in a movie. And, and again, when it's a great film, like, Goodfellas, for instance, you know, people are letting it slide for a little bit until they go after that next. But they were writing about a time and place. By the way, similar to things in Entourage, people ask me all the time, like, could you make this show today? Well, of course we could make it. And I would write differently now. There are, there, there are things in the universe that are different than they were 15 years ago. Right. I never wrote, A, I never wrote a single thing to offend people anyway. But there are things that I personally wouldn't write today that I wrote then, that even when I watch it, I get a little, you know, but it was very realistic at the time. And it was, you know, a half hour comedy that was meant to enjoy and people did at the time. But now, you know, there's revisionist shit to everything. So um, you also written in um, 
I, I remember uh, Chuck Liddell had an appearance. I believe Ronda Rousey. Are you yeah. an MMA fan or no? I am an MMA fan. And actually, you know, Chuck, Chuck was how I first found out about the MMA. So I was a big fan of his and we wanted him on the show and we, we called. Ronda was even more interesting because it was really right before she broke. I saw oh. her on the Jim Rome show and I was like, you know, she's beautiful. I can't believe like she could, you know, kick the shit out of everybody and stuff. Yeah. So um, I started writing this in the script and Warner Brothers, if you look at the timeline of the movie, they had no idea who she was. They were like, why, why are you putting her in this and that? And within a year, obviously she exploded. But uh, so I, I am a fan, although I'm not up to what's happening at the moment as much as I should be, because I've, I've honestly been keeping my TV off for the last four months. Yeah. I just can't. You know, so I, I watched the Connor fight whenever that was. That's the last thing I've seen. Um, it, it gets negative yeah. out there. And what, what now? Tell me about your podcast. Yeah, so I'm doing a podcast with Kevin Dillon. Kevin Connolly has oh. a podcast. Oh, yeah. yeah. So you, you guys should get Kevin Dillon on because he's so great. But uh, do uh, it, it starts going June 24th called Victory the Podcast. And uh, it's Kevin Dillon, Kevin Connolly, and myself. And we're going to bring in, you know, everybody from entourage people to other walks of life, Hollywood and otherwise. And we're going to talk about, you know, everything from entourage to our careers and to our lives and all of that stuff. So, What made you want to do it? It is funny too. Like the idea of podcasting and broadcasting, uh, so many people are doing it now. And I guess everybody, we all kind of want to be heard on some level. It's such a frustrating time. Um, it, what was it that made you want to do it? It was, it was something like, I have things I want to say and I'm not writing something right now where I just, what was it seem fun? Well, well, a couple of different things happened. People have been asking me to do a podcast for five years and some good people said, you know, whatever said, you have a good radio voice. You have a good personality. And I always thought a podcast, you know, part of me was like, it's stupid. And it's not really like, it's not really doing the system the way I believe that you were supposed yeah. to do it, work your way up and you do all this stuff. But I've always wanted to do radio TV and whatever. And, uh, how it happened now is Kevin Connolly started this podcast company. He's got about 20 podcasts and he said, do it. And again, I'm doing it for fun. Uh, I, it's not like I'm looking to make money on this, but we got together with Kevin, Kevin and I, and we just were having a great time. And yeah, there's nothing to do right now. So there's nothing shooting. There's nothing happening. There's nowhere to go. So it's been a good time. Yeah, it, it is kind of nice to be able to do something creative. Uh, when so many of the uh, the creative avenues have, have dried up. But I, I like the fact that at least you'll talk about what's going on, even in, in this discussion, whereas a lot of guys you get on, they they don't want to discuss. And just discussing something doesn't even have to be controversial. We just have right. a conversation about it. So, yeah, that's important for a podcast to be able to go down all avenues and talk about whatever you want to talk about. Yeah, I mean, I think that's I think that's what's interesting. And I want to hear hear different differing point of views. And look, right now, you, you – tend to want to be careful about what you say because you can get yourself in trouble with things that three months ago weren't so controversial. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm, I'm, people can come after me all they want. I'm proud of the work I've done in the past. It, whether it'll last for another two years or a hundred years, that's to be determined. And I think you can start rewriting everything. You know, there was a Seinfeld episode that you know, disappeared. Uh, you know, there was a Seinfeld episode at a Puerto Rican Day Parade that they, they took out of the rotation years ago. So oh. at, one, at, at one point, NBC put it on, thought it was good. And then at another point, they decided it was not whatever. It offended whoever it offended. So um, I think part of that is a little scary. And part of that is valuable for people to analyze, you know, what you're saying, who you're hurting, and, and, and whatever. So I think it's all good discussions. Well, I understand Michael Richard's Laugh Factory episode uh, has also been yanked from rotation. Yeah, well, that that was that. Was, <laughs> but that, that's what I'm saying. That's a different thing. That was his own personal self yeah. exploding in a moment of anger and saying things, right. as opposed to a character that is on TV. You know. Well, I thought when you mentioned Seinfeld and people getting outraged, uh, as a as a five a man uh, five six, I thought it was going to be the episode with the little people and then the the one little person who he lied about his height. Cause you don't do that shit. I'm technically five, six and a half, but when I fought, I never, I got pride. I left that half off, Jimmy. I, yeah, of course I you don't did. Round up. I don't round up like these motherfuckers. No. Ryan Fabers. So, so, I don't think well, you're Ryan Fabers lying. That is but that. you know what I'm saying, though. And like, so that offended some a lot of people, I'm sure. And you know, and, and 
you know, as each group goes, but still yeah. it's comedy. And I think, you know, you got to decide what you're willing to tolerate. But I think the PC culture is getting a little out of control. And that's not to say that there doesn't need to be changed. Again, to me, the fact that the Confederate flag has been flying at NASCAR <laughs> is insane. Yeah. The fact that a guy would come out and say he's going to quit if they don't let him keep, you know, to me, it's like if a Nazi flag was flying somewhere, I would not be comfortable being in the room. And it shouldn't have to be just because I'm Jewish. All good human beings should not want shit like that around. But, you know, differing people, and I think they are coming to a place, even the kneeling thing now, you know, which my feeling is, and I don't know what you guys feel, if you want to kneel for the flag, to me, that's what America is. You have the right to do that. That is your choice. And a lot of bad things have happened to a lot of people in, in this country. It's still the best in the world, but we're looking to improve always, and that's what we should be doing. So, uh, you know, I, I hope that this all leads to a kinder, better place, but I hope it doesn't affect art to the point that people are absolutely terrified to try anything, because I think that's a sad place. Well, artists, uh, sorry about it. artists have to fight, fight that, because what's happening is, what's not being talked about is the the vindictiveness of the current culture of punishment. We, we are, for some reason, going under the, the guise that people who are doing the targeting and the uh, asking for punitive actions are coming from a pure place or coming from a place of righteousness, but they're not. They're coming from a vindictive and ugly place and a desire to punish, and I don't know why we are looking at them as if they're on the right side of the issue telling us about ourselves. No, they're fucking vindictive and they want to be punishing. You can't drag somebody out and beat the shit out of them anymore. So we punish online, right. but it, that's right. all it is. And it's also political too. I mean, there's people who really don't care about what they're saying, but they want to make sure that whoever gets yeah. in trouble for doing something they did 10 years ago or, or this and that. And again, there was a different world and I'm not going to like get into defending any of the things from 20 years ago, but I think, it was a different time and a different place. And some people really didn't think they were offending people with some of the stuff that now is like, what happened? So, yeah. you know, it's, it's just weird. It's weird. It's, you know what, before this, it's getting worse and worse though. Cause I remember ages ago hearing, I believe it was Jerry Seinfeld saying they wouldn't be playing um, colleges and the comics don't do colleges as yeah. much because they're very easily offended. Right, and it's yeah. like, yo, man, I mean, you got to relax a little. I, I, don't, I don't How far is it going to go? You know, it's you know just... well, that, that's the scary thing. And you know what? It, it, it's like people just have to look back to communism or fascism and see when books were burned that certain people didn't like. And the truth is, is you write a piece of art and you spark conversations. And people might say it's offensive, especially when it's not good art, because some people set out to make something and it sucks and it's, sure. bad, and it's really bad. But when you do something... That's I good. see you've seen my work. <laughs> you know, whatever it is, you know, it's like, I always thought it was funny, you know, and I, you know, the Wolf of Wall Street is, is a good friend of mine, Jordan Belfort. And, you know, when the Entourage, the movie was coming out, um, I was actually, I was very, I was always concerned about being like, not PC, but I didn't want to push it to levels that, that people may have sought but the, the, sh the show started taking on this turn that people thought it was this misogynistic show, which to me, it never was. But when The Wolf of Wall Street came out, I saw it actually with Jordan. And I was like, Entourage is fucking tame compared to this. Like, are you kidding me? But because it was Scorsese and Leo, it was a piece of art. And the truth is, and I love the movie, by the way, but it was a comedy. It was a straight up comedy that guys love and actually... Most people didn't walk out of that movie, unlike Goodfellas, where you said, you know what, maybe I don't want to be a mobster because I'll die or go to jail. You watch that movie and people thought Jordan was a hero and they wanted to throw whatever the term is now, little people in their office, and they wanted to have all of this stuff. So I think it's weird through a certain lens, you could look at things differently, you know? Um, and to me, either way, it either entertains you and sparks some discussion which is fine if it sparks the discussion that, you know what, whether Quentin should say that word in a movie or not, that's uh, for other people to decide. But to me, it was characters and it was art. And I think, in my opinion, Django was an amazing movie that said, uh, that spoke to me and said a lot of things about racism. And, uh, you know, we'll see where it all falls out. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm more interested. I, it, here's the thing you never hear from people. They never talk about what they do that's offensive. 
Like I'll yeah. be interested in hearing people demand certain uh, apologies from people when they begin outing themselves, but you never hear people outing themselves. It's always like, gee whiz, lucky you, you found the perfect balance of rage and compassion. What a, what a great uh, thing you've accomplished. The, the real heavy PC police, they usually find something on them later because they use oh, yeah. it for their own platforms and to get where they're going. And again, none of this is to say that what's happening right now is not necessary and good. But again, we're talking about real life versus art, you know? Yeah. So, Yeah, fighting for justice and, and, and being outraged at what happened to George Floyd isn't politically correct. I mean, that, that's just, it's, it was just wrong. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's awful. Political correctness is taking a tragedy like that and then going, and by the way, that joke you told, it's like, right. what are you doing trying to right. connect what some right. fucking comedian said to right. a murder? Like, yeah. it, they're not connected events. Right. Yeah, well, well look, what about Kevin Dillon in fucking Platoon? Oh, is he good <laughs> in that? I think Dude, he was my favorite thing in that movie was Kevin Dillon. <laughs> That's what I think about is fighting fight the can. We talked about that on the podcast, you know, and, uh, you know, and we, we also talked about some of the language in that movie, which sure. is, of course, realistic. And, you know, Oliver Stone took great pains to make that a movie realistic. But now it's even even when we were doing it on the podcast, he didn't even want to say a line that he said in the movie. And, you know, it's different being, listen, I'm, I'm now he's Kevin Dillon on a podcast as opposed to an actor sure. in a movie. Yeah. But, the movie has to stand for what it what it is. And young men in Vietnam, you know, just like, you know, in my opinion, police officers under tremendous duress, bad things happen. And it's a volatile mix and, and there's gotta be some reforms, but there's also gotta be some culture of understanding that police have a difficult job and, you know, we also have to figure out a way to respect them as well, you know? Yeah, like in Platoon, yeah. you got Elias and then you got Bonds. I don't know, maybe I'm way off. <laughs> but I'll tell you, what a great movie. Yeah. Well, look, Doug, good, good luck with the podcast. What is it called and where can people get it? Victory the Podcast, June 4th. It'll be on uh, Apple, Spotify, and all the other platforms. Um, uh, it's, I think it's live now, so you can subscribe now and you'll get a notification on Apple. But uh, we'll be everywhere. It's going to be fun. Awesome. Well, well, listen, awesome. We have uh, we have to get to Marvin Vittori, our, our final guest, but uh, they, good luck with that. And, and you're really a good talker and an interesting guy, and, and I'm sure it'll be great. Take care, uh, man. Well, nice thanks, Doug. You. Thanks for coming on, buddy. All right. Now, that was good talking to Doug Allen, a very smart guy. Um, and, uh, I, you know, I like, again, I like the fact that he'll talk about what's going on. And Marab, of course, that we're working right now on getting Marvin Vittori. Uh, he's having a bit of a Zoom issue, which I guess it's new for guys that aren't used to using it. Let's yeah. do- You know what I do, our, Jimmy? Yeah. I just have my wife set it up and like before, like I lost the you best guys, one. I just yell, honey, I yell, she runs up. Just a shout out for her. All right, listen. We had go, a hey, decent picks. day. I think we did good. Well, I regret, <laughs> let's go to the co-main, which I regret. Um, I can tell you why I took Robertson in the uh you took uh oh Robertson sorry you you took uh Vittori I picked, second I round the, TKO I the Italian dream I took and listen to me I know who you took let's say it again Robertson yes now Jimmy listen I know listen to me as your friend good friend yeah almost like, like top t top 10 Co top, yeah. top five <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I know in the past, because I know it's awkward. I'm not going to do it this time, because this guy's a serious guy. You know. Oh, you can. I mean, I'm not uh, going to bring up that you picked. Uh, you picked his uh, opponent to win. I regret it, I and, and I. But I can tell you what my, you said, Carl Roberson. Yes, you picked him by I think second, second round. round. Here, here was my thinking. I don't. I, I don't think I should bring it up because in the past it almost becomes like a little bit. That's okay. I don't and I'm like, ah, guess what Jimmy did? And I kind of tease you, and you, it gets awkward. But yeah. I don't, I'm not going to listen to me. I'm not crossing my fingers, or am I? Well, um, I will say this. Rosa, um, we didn't pick that fight because that was moved up from the prelims. Now, here's why I picked Roberson, and I wish I hadn't. Go ahead. He, go ahead. he had missed weight. Um, fighting, and, and Vittori fought at welterweight and now fights at middleweight. Roberson fought at... Um, light heavyweight 
and is fighting a middleweight. So for me, I was just thinking Roberson might be too big for him, like having trouble with the weight. I was thinking size wise. Can I ask he, you something? Yeah. I don't want to interrupt you, but I, I'm I think I'm that. correct about that. That what? About the fact that they, uh, he fought oh. uh, light heavyweight. I'm just going by memory here. We, I looked this up last week. Yes, sir. Who did he lose to besides Adesanya, which was very close? Split decision. Split one. decision, yeah. Who did he lose to in the UFC? Because it says 5 2 and 1 in the UFC. Guys, who else did he lose to? Look that up. Well, he drew with Akhmedov. I'm sorry, Akhmedov. I'm hard to see. And he lost to uh, Antonio Carlos Jr. Oh, he did? That was a 207, yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. It was wow. a decision. It was a decision. Yeah. Oh, I think I remember that. Yeah. Well, listen, let's not bring that up. And let's definitely not bring up that you picked Carl Robes in the beat him. That's it was, awkward. It was, it was, I wish I hadn't. It was a bad move, but he had fought at light heavyweight and middleweight. And it was just for me a size yeah, issue. I thought, like, and, and I, Vittori was so mad. He's I'm like, okay. I wonder if that's yeah, going to cause a, him to make a mistake. I, I was incorrect. Marvin Vittori. Yeah. He reminds me, he looks to me as one of those born fighters. Yeah. I want to hear when did he start training and what was his first discipline? When, when, and where? I'm going to say he started training within the last six well, months and it was ninjutsu. Stop it. Ninjutsu. Ninjutsu ninja. might be more popular now with the whole COVID-19 thing because of the mask. Uh, <laughs> boo. <laughs> God damn it. I didn't want to enjoy that one, but I did. You um, loved it. I did. Uh, I shouldn't have. I should have I should have hung up and quit, but I did enjoy it. I'm ready for um, a good time, Jimmy. All right, let's, so hold on. Man. Let's do our picks here, buddy. I, uh, let's go through them. That one, I was wrong, and you were right. We were both correct about uh, one Calvillo. One, so You're one to know. Okay. Oh, sorry. I thought you went over the first, the main event. Calvillo, obviously, we both picked by decision. Um, now, uh, Rosa Aguilar was not on. Marab was not on because it was because Ray Borg dropped out and Gustavo Lopez that got moved on prelims. And um, uh, Agapova against Cyphers was uh, not on the main card when we, we had taped the show. Uh, no, we didn't know that was not on the main card. Oh, uh, However, said, wait, Andre Feely. No, 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 no. Wait, what are you uh, gonna say? Uh, Maria Agapova against oh, uh, beating Hannah Stifers. Sorry, 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 sorry. Now, Andre Feely, we both picked uh, third round stoppage, and he did uh, win by split decision, which shocked Andre. And uh, Jordan Espinosa, uh, you felt that uh, De La Rosa was going to win by decision. I expertly picked Espinosa, so we both. Uh... So I'm four and one. Let me see. I'm four and one. Well, in a way, yeah, but you didn't no. pick him by the. Right, he so won by a one. submission. I'm three and one. You didn't I, pick the method. I picked the method. Decision. I picked my stoppage. Marvin, who are you talking about? Um, Jordan Espinosa, I picked uh, by decision, and you yeah. took uh, Mark De La Rosa. Jimmy. Listen, Not that it matters, but I as we're talking. We the specifics. Let's go I, into the number. Just so you know. How many fights did you pick right? Compared to wrong. Let's go over that. Let's give I you only picked one Listen. wrong and the rest right. I have to shit right now terribly, by the way. No! I'm not going to, but I'm just letting you know. hold that. It's, it's in there. Out. Something's popping out, Jimmy. No, I'm not prairie dogging, as we like to say, Matt, but I, I will Dirt say that I... Out. Jimmy, listen. Anyway, back to the movie. Should we do the thing again? No, we already did the movie Minute. We did the movie Minute. Uh, 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 oh, yeah, we did that. Yeah. And it was... It Hidden was Jeff. Policy. Hidden Jeff. But I didn't get into everything with it. Did I? Equilibrium. I so. Equilibrium. <laughs> Equilibrium with the great Christian Bale. <laughs> he's not in a bad movie. That's how I knew. So this guy, I don't want to give nothing away, man, because he starts a, as a stone cold killer. Like he's enforcing people not to feel. Yeah. Everybody thinks a drug, so they don't feel. So you see his partner, Ned Stark, and he's really being Ned Starky. Like he's really deep in thought. Like yo, this shit's not good. We're destroying all the art. Why aren't we feeling? And you see in his little gun, you're like, oh man, he's not taking the capsules. Look. Is a full. Is there? I saw Christian Bale's. They're almost empty. That means no. What that means, Jimmy? Right. It's just like it's gonna. What you're gonna do? He's starting to feel again. Ah. So you. So what happens? I don't want to give nothing away. Okay. But let's just say you can't feel. If you feel, you know what happens if you feel? Cry. Death. 
No, wow. no, the sentence is death. Everybody's numbed to feelings. And there's no mm. war. And that's how they justify it. They're taking this drug. And the guys who enforce it, they do like a martial art, these katas with a gun called gun katas. So it's oh, wow. Say, so if they're gone, they, when they oh, come back. It's almost like it, Matrix. What? When they come back, do people say, welcome back? <laughs> Welcome back, Connors. Yeah. Jimmy, 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 nobody under. I know. I'm an older man. I now know. he's ready, and I'm, I'm, you got me dying about welcome back, Connor. All right. Yeah. Hold on. Bring me back. Bring me back. Ready? Come on. Be right. mature. Let's get, get Marvin back. Vittori get on back. here. A, a killer performance. Ah, oh, there he is. The Italian dream. Hey, man, congratulations, buddy. You're on UFC Unfiltered. Congrats on your fight. Amazing. Thank you, Thank you Matt. Thank you very much. Awesome. You know what I really enjoyed? The first weigh-in, back when you were supposed to fight the first time. And I liked the confidence. Somebody might say cocky, but I like the confidence of the Italian dream, Jimmy. And then Carl's like, okay, you're talking. And Marvin's like, yeah, you see my fights? Did you see my fights? <laughs> Jimmy, I'm amped up. He amped me up. <laughs> so then I don't believe, listen, nobody wants to fight in the street. I, you don't want to do that. But I understand the frustration. Is that Was it frustrating when the fight was off after that? Yeah, I mean, and also like, because at the wins, at the wins, I kind of like, I want to feel the guy, you know. I want to see where he's at mentally as well. And then uh, I want to see where he says, and I knew that because I knew I pick on these things like he didn't want to go. He didn't want to go the extra two hours to try to make the way. He was there before me and I was there at nine. That means he was there like 8.30 or 8.45 and he was one pound and a half over. And I'm like, how the hell are you there before me? And you're, uh, you're not on weight. And one and a half pound is not that much. And he wasn't that destroyed. Like, he could have kept going. That, that showed that he's not willing to go all the way. And so I was like, let me let me see where he's at. And uh, and he went and he told me keep that same energy. And so I told him like, of course I'm gonna keep that same energy. Yes. I talked to you before, and I'm keeping the same energy all the way. You can bet on that. And um, and so then um, and then what happened then after he pulled out, he like he allegedly was unwell. Uh, he was very confusionary because for a moment he said he had rhabdo, and then he's up and walking the day after. But I mean, I have nothing. I mean, he, you know, we settled it. I mean, uh, yeah. Yeah. but then, but then, but then, what what was wrong to me was that down in the lobby at one point, whatever went through. But then mm, he squared up on me, and I'm like, man, we were supposed to fight in three hours, and you fucking want me want me to fight right now in the lobby, yeah. and you're squaring up on me. So I'm like. That ain't gonna happen. I'm like, all right, fuck you, let's do it. I mean, and that's that's why I flipped a little bit. Must well, it actually got sad. you guys bumped up to like you, you were you, were you co-main originally, or because uh, there was so much that video was seen so many times, so that might have helped you a little bit. It moved you up to the co-main event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On a sense, it did. Yeah, I mean, we were in co-main, we were in the main car, but we were in co-main, definitely not. What I want to know, what Marshall, you look to me like a a born fighter, a, a real fighter. When did you start training? What age? I was a very, I was very young when I got into the gym, but I was doing like, a, to be honest, you don't even, my, it's not a very known martial arts. What I started with was a Yaza Kambudo, it's called. It's like very, oh, like, shit. it's, it's like that? some weird stuff. My, my father was into, it's, it's, it's kind of like, it's, it's, but you know, he brought me to the gym. It was the, since a very young age and then I, at the age of like uh 13 14 i started to do kickboxing but i always wanted to do mma man i, I grew up watching like not grew up but like i i, I got into watching uh 14 4, uh, 14 15 fader man fader was my adult back then i, I was just like loving fader 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 and from a very young age i was like uh i i saw this guy was so of course like no emotion and everything and i'm different but like on on his styles, on his styles, he had he was well rounded anywhere. He's like everywhere he goes, this guy is, is comfortable on his back, on top, standing, wrestling, even even like like upper body wrestling, legs. He's always he's always game. 
And and I knew from day one, I'm like, if I'm gonna be an MMA fighter, I need to train at all the all uh, all disciplines. And uh, and so <clears throat> all the pride as well, like uh, really really uh, fascinated me. And and so from 14, basically, <clears throat> I started kickboxing, but right away went into jujitsu. But it was hard. I'm from a small village. I had to always go different gyms. I was competing for all the disciplines and trying to put it together on my own and then eventually moved to London. But, yeah. As a Fedor fan, how how hard was it uh, to watch that Verdum fight um, when, when Fabricio... He, I, I still... He kind of tricked Fedor into coming to the ground. He, you know, he, oh. he, he really outsmarted him and brought him down to the ground. That was a hard one to watch. Yeah, I mean, I think it was way as a, as a very as a hardcore feeder fan was harder to watch his last his his, his uh yeah uh, his other fights like like the one with uh, Trinaldo that was bad not not Trinaldo with Fab like that Brazilian uh, boxing guy that like like he, former UFC fighter where uh, where they they he almost got stopped in the first one then went off went on second and third but I mean his last fights. Where he wasn't himself anymore was where they were harder. With Fabrice, you know, it was it was a fair fight, and um, that that's a lot of people that I feel like that's uh, the problem that a lot of a uh, very dominant champion and uh, very great champion run into like a little bit of overconfidence, you know. But sure, it is it is what it is. I mean, it was a fair fight, you know. Like Fabrizio has a has some of the slickest guard in the game, and so he just ran into it. Yeah, well, you know, speaking of champions, for people that don't know, I want everybody listening to go on UFC Fight Pass and look up and watch your fight versus the champ, Israel Adesanya. And I'll tell you, very close fight, and you lost a split decision. And you know, how does it feel to see after that? You know, now he's the champion, and he's laying people out. How does it feel? Like, how, what does that tell you about yourself? How do you feel about that? No, I feel. I mean, I, I, you know, I'm, I have good confidence on myself, and uh, it comes from a lot of things. And um, now, I mean, I know, I know what's my worth, and I know I can, I, can, I, I mean, I, I think I'll, I'll beat him without any doubt uh, when I, when I'm gonna meet him again. But um, no, that what gives me even more confidence is knowing that at that time, without so much knowledge that I have now, I still, I still, I did that much to him. Um, and, um, yeah, no, I mean, then, uh, I, I, I had, a, I had a little bit of bad luck, you know, like in my last two, two years in, with the UFC, I had so I, I, I had some bad luck, but we're going to make it work it out. I, if I have to work harder to, for it, we'll, we'll make it. And now it's going, it's, it, things are going good with, uh, but after that fight, I was out because, um, with some Austrian stuff, they, 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 like with the Austrian stories that a lot of people were getting caught for like uh, super little nanograms of stuff and um, I, I didn't know how and uh, so but long story short basically I was out for like I couldn't fight for like 14 15 months and that's where he's he really went all the way up but um, no man I think uh, I think that was a very close fight and uh, we have to redo it and uh, man, I mean, I chased him the whole time, and I he couldn't do anything to me. I chased him the whole time, and uh, I I brought the fight wherever I wanted to. Also, like third round, I thought going into the third we were one one one. Even at the corner, I told me we we're one one. We need the third. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna make sure we're gonna get the third. And I took him down, and I and I held him down for like almost four minutes. Um, yeah. 26 years old, man. Sky's the limit. How soon do you want to get back in there? You look unscathed. Yeah, I, we'll see. I wanna. I wanted to see if I could uh, if I could go back to Italy for a little bit, but I think the American borders are still closed. I'm just gonna get a couple of days. But man, I was just here at practice. Now I just went to to watch a Kings, and I'm already eager. In, like I'm really eager to go back, man. I can I, Yeah, exactly. I don't have anything. I don't have no injuries. I feel. I feel like I can uh, can be back training tomorrow. So, um, yeah, I mean, soon, man, soon. I'm and, soon. And in Italy, you grew up in a small village. You said how small? Yeah, five thousand people. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. And now, did you guys get hit hard with the whole uh, coronavirus over there, or how, how was it? Um, kind of for a little bit, yes, we did. Yeah, but none of my family got uh got got it. 
And uh, but yeah, for a little bit we did because it's it's, uh, it's I'm very up north north. Like I'm basically on the border with the uh, Austria almost. Like I can oh, be wow. in Austria like two hours, two hours and a half. Yeah. So yeah, man. No, it's nice out there. I I miss it. So what did you when you were a kid growing up in this small in this village? Do you know that you want to be a fighter or what? What was your career or path supposed to be? Mm, you know, like it's there is like. The little village, the, those little villages are like, they're a little bubble. It's like, you'll never really be out of comfort if you don't go out of there. But it'll be hard to really exceed on a lot of things because there's not so many opportunities in a sense. Right. But so I didn't know. Nobody ever pushed me to do anything. I was, all I knew was just, I always loved, I always loved fighting. Honestly, I was, even, even as a kid, I was always in some scuffles. And... Um, I always, I always loved contact sports. Even when we were playing rugby or something like that, I would always jump in. Like, I would always love like, and I, and one thing about me, I'm super, super competitive all the time. I make a competition out of everything. So you have siblings? Any siblings? <laughs> Brothers? Sisters? Yeah, I have. A, but I'm the big. I'm I'm the older one. I have a, other three siblings. Yes. That, that's so great, man. And uh, now let me tell you, I recommend at 26 that you go back there. I don't know if you have it in Italy, high school reunions, but I think you're going to be the man. You're going to be the man in that village. I'll tell you right now. They got a house there yeah, back home. They got to be watching you, no? You're like the, yeah. you are the pride of Italy right now in the UFC. Yeah. Yeah, you know? but I'm going to tell like, yeah, yeah. But, but, but the thing is like, um, one thing I love, like I've always, I've always, I always uh, let like the, now this situation, but I've always gone back like every three, four months and out there they, they treat me normally, you know, like, like, I mean, yeah. of course, like some people that haven't seen me in a long time, maybe they're like, oh, wow, you're doing this and you're doing that. But I love the fact that like, I have my old friends since like most yeah. of my friends are still the one from day one, you know, I love to go back and just like, just as normal, you know, just of course, like to let people that they don't see me as much and then they're, they might see me on the news and they're kind of like, they're, they're, they're freaking out, of course, but like, um, yeah, man, I also like the fact that right there, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just their friend. That's it, you know? Yeah. That's good, man, to keep your, your circle small. You know yeah. what I mean? Look, congratulations. I, I mean, it was, it, what a great, great performance. And uh, again, that sometimes these arguments, it, it happened, Jeremy Stevens and, and Yair, uh, after that, sometimes these lobby arguments, they, people, the interest is raised so much more from the fight. So I think that's only going to help you and, and raise your visibility even more than it was. So I can't wait to see what is what is next for you. And I'd love to see you run it back without Asanya, too. I'll tell you, yeah, man, yeah, 26 years old, man. You got yeah. the world by the nuts. I am a fan, and I can't wait to see you fight again, dude. I like your fighting style, and I like the way you carry yourself. Thank you, man. Thank you very much. You guys are the man. Thank you. We'll Thank definitely you. talk to you again, Marvin. Thanks so much for coming on. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Right. Yeah, Take care, buddy. Be good. I, I, dude, listen, yeah. I like his attitude, man. I like yeah. him. I, I like him on the scale because... It's one thing to talk to talk, but then you walk in the walk. That's what I like, Jimmy. Yeah, he's a pretty ferocious guy. Like, you can see that. Uh, like you said, he's a born fighter. I, I think you're right. Well, Jim, um, I, know, I know we're on air, and I know people are listening, but guess who's in my circle? You, my little Jimmy Bird. I'm you're in, in my circle. circle. You're in my circle. I'm in your corner. Yeah. I'm in your corner. I appreciate that. Although, right, you got to be careful how you say in the circle, because that could... You know, there could be a, a sometimes a bunch of guys in a circle. It's not good. There's a cracker involved. You know, it's never a positive thing. <laughs> what the fuck? Jimmy, yes. are you going to watch Equilibrium with the great Christian Bale? I'm Maybe. almost done with it. It's crazy because you never think of it. And now this guy's starting the field, man. He had his little morning pill. He cracked it by axe. I don't want to give that away. How old is and it? And all of a sudden, he's about New? to take the other pill. It's from 2002. That, didn't you hear when you did the Mad Movie Minute and I threw in... Hidden gems. Yes, but I, I wasn't that sure if he's 2002. Yeah, I, I assumed. Well, I mean, what, I, what I mean by hidden gems is that, uh, you know, it's been out for a while. I never seen it. I see most shit. You understand? Yeah. And I'll tell you right now, I'm in, especially in the times we are now, it's really kind of scary. 
It is. It's like, yo, man, is that fucking next? My God, it's so crazy. Um, Jimmy, I got other life things I want to talk about. Maybe I'll save it for next episode. Yes. And you know, I know, you know, we also have fights coming up uh, next weekend. Um, we can talk about it on Wednesday. Keep you doing let's it. talk about it on Wednesday. We do. Yeah, we do. Dana is keeping everybody busy, which is really nice. Keeps us busy. I love it. Jimmy, um, Cynthia Cavello, Cavillo, she did so great. Cavello, sorry. She, incredible. She yeah, she incredible. Did great. I just want to ask, Cav- let's call the whole thing off. I always mess up the names. Listen to me. Jimmy, what else you want to do for the rest of the day? You want to FaceTime in a couple hours? I would love or to. Or you want to wait till Wednesday? No, no. Here's what I'm doing right now. Tell me, Jimmy. Besides ending this in... Immediately. <laughs> yes. I, I listen, whole hundred percent. It could have been five minutes ago, but let's just go. No, nah, I didn't mind. It was a fun show. I, I really enjoyed Doug uh, Ellen very much, and I obviously love Barab, and, and it was good to to meet Marvin uh, Vittori. So, um, yeah, we'll talk uh, in the next day or so, and get get our shit together for Wednesday. All right. If anybody wants to message me about um, Equilibrium, yeah, is it equal? Yes, Equilibrium with Christian Bale. I'm, I'd like to talk about it because I'm telling you right now, I'm digging it, man. What a great actor. Yeah. Best Batman ever. Move yeah. over, Michael Keaton. Excuse me, Val Kilmer. Easy Ben Affleck. Best Batman ever. Christian Bale. Equilibrium. Jimmy, I will talk to you in a couple days. Right. And I miss you already. So just hold it in for two seconds. I, I know I'm a lot to, I know I'm a lot to take in. No, I miss you too. I'm going to talk to you soon, Jimmy. All right, bye. Bye, everybody. See you soon.